Okay, please rise, accompanying us tonight in the Star Spangled Banner is Jane Howard. Ms. Howard. Thank you very much, Mrs. Howard. <laughs> Welcome to the um, 2016 special town meeting. We have a short warrant tonight, about eight articles. Um, we're going to ask that we keep all our any announcements or resolutions or anything else that's going to be announced today strictly confined to those eight articles, with the exception of one thing Mr. Greeley has. Um, I would like to take a moment to recognize Quiet. Um, Roland Chaput passed away this past weekend. Roland was a longtime member, he's 44 years of a town meeting member. Uh, he was a member of the Redevelopment Board, the Conservation Committee, the Friends of Robbins Farm, the Dallin Museum, the Taurus Council. He was on a lot of committees over the years. So I just want to take a moment of silence for Roly. Thank you. Um, one other announcement. Elsie Fiore took a fall the other day. She broke her arm in her nose. So she's just out of rehab. So if you want to send her a note um, to the thinking about her, she's at 58 Mott Street in Arlington. You can find that on the, um, the website. She's our, now our longest serving town meeting member. Um, are there any town meeting members who have yet to be sworn in? Hey. We know who they are if they don't, because they're clickers. If not, um, I recognize the chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Greeley. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It is requested that members of the Board of Selectmen, elected officials of the town, town manager, department heads of the town and staff, superintendent of schools and staff, committees, commissions, and boards of the town, Miniman Regional Vocational Technical School District Committee and Superintendent, members of the general court representing Arlington, and also any consultants who have been retained to work for the town relative to articles to be acted upon by this meeting, representatives of interested parties of Article I and representatives of the news media be permitted to sit within the special town meeting enclosure. Second. All in favor, please say yes. yes. Opposed? Hearing none. Madam Clerk. Do you have reason to believe that this meeting was appropriately called by the Board of Selectmen and that the constable made a return of service on the warrant according to the bylaws? She signifies yes, she does. Mr. Greeley. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It is moved that in the unfortunate circumstance I'm sorry, that's not there, sir. It is moved that if all the business of the meeting is set forth in the warrant for the special town meeting is not disposed of at this session, when the meeting adjourns, it adjourns to Wednesday, January 27th at 8 p.m. All in favor, please say yes. yes. 
Opposed? No. It's voting, I saw to clear it. A um, couple of things. Put your cell phones on vibrate, please. And we're going to be using our clickers tonight. I know there's a few folks haven't checked in, but we have a test question. Um, Michael, ready? The test question is going to be, are we going to get more snow this year than we got last year? We have a new toy, a voting light. So when Michael gives us the cue that's ready to vote, when he figures it out over there, it's going to go green. While the light's green, you can vote. So go ahead and vote. One is yes, two is no, and three is the, uh, you abstain. So one is yes, two is no, and three is abstain. Remember, it's the last time you click, so don't put your clicker down because you may re-vote without knowing it until the light's gone out. Yes, Michael? You're going to restart it. Okay. This is why we have a test question, work out our bugs. We have a green light. <laughs> hey, I'm a heck of a lot closer. <laughs> okay, yeah, and go ahead and vote. Oh, look, he has a little counter for us as well. One yes, two no, three abstain. All right, so the time's up, but the machine's still counting. And we got a green light still, Michael. Oh. Oh, it's still counting. I guess it has to pull the room a few times and make sure it got all our votes. Ready. All right, so no. It, the no's win. We're not going to get any more snow. And do the, do the thing. Make sure your vote came up right, please. Eric, you forgot to vote. Quorum's 62? Six, 62 people's a quorum. Um, Mr. Greeley, do you have an announcement? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Since our last town meeting, we have four new members of your executive team. I'd like to introduce to you a position we have not had in Arlington before. We have our new facilities director. Please welcome, if you would, Ruth Bennett. Ruth, I believe, is over here. We lost Andrew Flanagan, our deputy town manager, to become the town manager in Andover. He's been replaced by our new deputy town manager, most recently from Amherst. Please welcome Mr. Sandy Pooler. We lost our director of planning and community development to Lexington. Please welcome our new Director of Planning and Community Development, Jennifer Raitt. And we lost our comptroller to golf. <laughs> uh, most recently coming to us from Everett, please welcome our new comptroller, Mr. Richard Vesquet. Welcome you all to the town of Arlington. 
Usually, if new people get a pass on the town meeting, this is it, so be ready in May or April. Um, any other announcements or resolutions? Seeing none. Um, Article 1, reports of commit committees. Uh, Mr. Uh, moderator, I move we receive the uh, report of the Board of Selectmen. Seconded. All in favor? It's so received. Thank you very much, Ms. Greeley. Go ahead. I move that the report of the Finance Committee be received. All in favor? Aye. So received. Mr. Moderator, Charles Foskett, Precinct 8. I move that the report of the Capital Planning Committee be received. All in favor? Aye. It is so received. Mr. Cole? John Cole, Chair of the Permanent Town Building Committee, moved to have our report accepted. <laughs> received. received. All in favor? The report of the Permanent Town Building Committee is so received. Any other reports or committees? Seeing none. Um, Mr. Griff, the Tosti, I'm following my agenda here. Mr. Tosti. I move that the recommended votes contained in the respective reports of the Finance Committee and Board of Selectmen be before the meeting without further motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? They are before the motion without the meeting without additional motions. I move that Article 1 be laid upon the table. All in favor of pleading Article 1 upon the table, please say aye. aye. Or, yes, I'm sorry. All opposed? Article 1 is upon the table. Um, that brings us to Article 2. We have before us a recommended vote of the Finance Committee. Mr. Tossi, were you going to speak to that? No. No, okay. Um, Mr. Schlickman. Yes, Mr. Foskett. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Thank you very much. So, um, because Article 2 and 3 are very similar, we're going to have all discussions for Article 2 and 3 now, and that we're then going to have separate votes as in our booklets for Article 2 and 3. So just as a matter of convenience for everybody and not to have duplicate discussions and questions. So Article 2 and 3 are technically before us. Thank you, Mr. Foster. appreciate that. Mr. Schlickman. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Schlickman. I'm a town meeting member from Precinct 9. I am chair of your school committee. Uh, I was in this hall in, two th in 1997. In fact, I was the Minuteman school committee member from Arlington at that point when this whole start, uh, story started. We had a debt exclusion to renovate seven elementary schools for the purpose of providing equity across town and quality facilities. We had schools held together with duct tape. Uh, the vote, we lost it. We thought we lost by 13 votes. We had a recount, a recount with the hanging chads of 1997, and we ended up losing by 34 votes. Pressured by the state because the deadline for getting local funding was two weeks away, and the shovels needed to go into the ground, and we would have lost it all if we failed. 1998, we put three schools up, Hardy, Bishop, Brackett, 80,004 votes yes, 5539 no, a 59.1% win. We followed up with the other four schools in 2000, 7192 yes, 2793 no, a 72% win for that debt exclusion. This proved to you when we split it up and said, okay, maybe it's not your turn now, but we need you to vote for the schools across town, people said yes. And the people in the Stratton community consistently said yes for all the other schools, and they were hosts for the children who were moved out of the other schools. They've been a great num uh, neighbor. They deserve the equity and quality that the other six schools have had, and that's what we're doing here tonight, finishing a process we started 19 years ago. 
and to talk to you more about the exact details of the equity and quality we're going to see as a result of your affirmative vote tonight is our superintendent, Dr. Kathleen Bodie. Dr. Bodie. Kathleen Bodie, superintendent. Good evening, everyone. I'm here this evening to ask for your approval for funding for the Stratton Renovation Project and for the modular classrooms needed to house the Stratton students during the 2016-17 school year. The completion of this project will fulfill the promise made to the community over 19 years ago to rebuild or renovate all seven of Arlington's elementary schools. While some renovation work was completed at Stratton in 2011, the work was limited to the classroom wing. Windows were replaced, a roof a roof, new roof installed, the HVAC and electrical systems were updated in that part of the building only. Work on the remaining part of the building was deferred until a more comprehensive plan was developed. In December 2017, we formed the Stratton Building Committee composed of myself, the, the Deputy Town Manager, CFO, Stratton Principal, and representatives from the School Committee, teachers, parents, as well as a representative from the Finance Committee, the Capital Planning Committee, and the Permanent Town Building Committees. The charge was to investigate what renovations would be needed at Stratton so that its facilities had parity uh, with the other elementary schools. The, during that uh, process, uh, the challenge was to define what is parity. And then to be able to provide to the Capital Planning Committee a report on that plan the following August 2014. So I said the challenge was defining what parity meant. Parents, teachers, and staff were surveyed, meetings were held. The committee took field trips to other schools, data on rooms and comparison of facilities, both in square footage and uh, types of room were compared. We also reviewed the inside on-site report. Through this process, the committee was able to identify the key renovations and upgrades that were needed in order for Stratton to have facility parity with the other schools. The infrastructure that was not upgraded in 2011 needed upgrading, as well as there was a general improvement to the cosmetic appearance of, of most parts of the school. The kitchen needed to be remodeled so students were not being served lunch in the hall. The library needed expansion because it was about half the size it should be for the number of students in the school. And the nurse's office was deemed too small and needed to be expanded. The school also needed a conference room, which it did not have. The building committee hired, with the support of the town, town manager and the capital planning committee, the architectural firm, DRA, to help develop plans and cost estimates. A plan was submitted to the Capital Planning Committee that presented four scenarios with cost estimates for the scope of work needed to achieve parity. The scope of the work was planned out in timelines over 10 years, 5 years, 3 years, and 14 months. The longer the timeline to complete the project, the greater the cost. The Capital Planning Committee chose the shortest time frame. This option was desirable not only because it minimized costs, but it concentrated disruption in a shorter window of time. And probably most importantly, it was giving Stratton community the renovated school it had waited a long time for. This scenario requires that we lease temporary modular classrooms for next school year so that we do not have the, because we do not have the room capacity in our other schools to accommodate all the Stratton students unlike how we were able to during the, the Thompson construction. On the screen, soon on the screen, um, you, you will be looking at the floor plan for the central part of Stratton that will be renovated. 
The key change is that the library will no longer be located in this part of the building in order to be able to expand the kitchen and serving area as well as the nurse's suite and also a space to provide a conference room. The teacher's workroom and cafeteria will still remain in this section. This part of the building also contains the uh, kindergarten rooms. So in addition to the infrastructure work there, they will be adding, they will be adding bathrooms to that part of the, of the building. Dr. Bodie, do you need more time? Just, just 30 seconds. OK. I'll, I'll grant you the time, because this is important. Thank you. And what you see here is the floor plan for the new library and a, a rendition of what it will look like. For those of you that know the Stratton building, you'll know that this was, it was the old gym that was at the far end of the classroom wing. I'll be happy to answer any questions, um, but, but in advance I want to thank you for your support of this very important project. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Cole. I'm going to grab a pointer over here. Put up the new slide. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> John Cole, Chair of the Permanent Town Building Committee. I've got to work from this side of the room. I think I'm here for color commentary because a lot of my comments have already been made. We shall begin. Uh, first, I'd like to recognize a few members of the Building Committee who are in the hall this evening. Uh, Mr. Reedy, Mr. Marr, uh, Mr. Chaplain, Ruthie Bennett, and Bill Hainer. Did I miss anybody? We are also joined by uh, Scott Wooden, principal architect from DRA, who is in charge of the building program at Stratton and will be available for any questions uh, later in the evening. Here we are at the Stratton School. The, um, oh, excuse me. Is there a microphone I can walk with? No. Okay, how about that? Go around to the other side of the podium. There you go. Quite as attractive. That's okay. They're looking at the screen, not you. Okay. How do I get this thing to go? There we go. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. We're going to get there yet. So there we are at the Stratton School. On the right-hand side, this is the wing that was renovated in 2009 and 2011. I remind you that about a third of the cost of that was reimbursed by the state under the Green Schools Building Program. Uh, which was set up to recharge the economy after the financial collapse in 2008. Uh, this is the proposed floor plan of the renovation, which you saw from Superintendent Bodie. Now I'm giving you the color version of it. The main feature on this floor, the, the, the plan is too big to fit on one page, so that cut line is actually where the two halves connect. Um, here are the renovated kindergarten rooms, cafeteria, gymnasium, the reconfigured food service area, admin, classroom block, music, and art. Lower level, as Dr. Bodie mentioned, has additional classrooms for the upper grades. And the crown jewel of the project is the new media center in the repurposed gymnasium. That's the plan. It's fairly simple. What is complicated are the logistics. Number one, as mentioned, we have no place to house the Stratton students during the construction period because the other district schools are near or at capacity. So we are proposing to lease modular units here, which would be plugged into the west end of the building. And during the construction period, we are proposing to use the gymnasium here and the cafetorium as an adjunct to the basic classroom modules. These are what the modular units look like. Uh, they, are they will be designed and fabricated to the school department specifications and then leased for, by the town through 
the 2016-17 uh, school year. The schedule is where things get a little tricky. What we basically have to do here is align the town's funding cycle with the optimal construction <coughs> sequence to get everything done within a compressed time frame of 14 months. That's basically why we have asked you to spend a night with us in a cold January to advance the funding so this project can start a little bit earlier. Let me explain. Whoops, go back one. We are here tonight, town meeting. We need to have fabrication of the modular units starting very soon so they can be on site in early May. That will allow them to become a warehouse over the summer to receive educational materials and reuse furniture from the existing school. At the same time, we are completing the development of the architectural plans for the renovation of the existing building. That will be bid next month. We'll have real numbers in March. That way we can start the construction process Jan uh, June 23rd, the day after school is out. Over the summer period, we need to complete the renovation of the cafeteria and the gymnasium so they can be part of the school for the next school year. And I need one more minute, if you please, Mr. Moderator. Yep, the budget is a little bit dark here, but I can go over it with you. I believe you have a copy in your handout. For the modular units, um, we have bids in hand. We are ready to sign a contract this week pending approval. The contract amount is a little over $3 million. We need about $100,000 uh, in contingency for site work for a total of $3.1 million. On the general construction for the renovation of the school, we do not have hard bids in hand at this moment because of the compressed time frame the architect had to work in. What we have are 90% construction drawings which have been estimated by both the architect and a third party estimator hired by the building committee. They have come up with a, a number of 9.5 million as the cost of the renovation of the Stratton School. On top of that, we have soft costs, which will be items purchased directly by the town, the furniture, the technology, and professional fees. And then owner contingency, 1.2 million. That is basically our safeguard in the event, unlikely, I hope, that the construction bids come in above our projection, we will be able to execute a contract and keep this project on schedule, rather than having to come back to the town meeting in the spring, which would push the construction out four to six months. I would like to thank uh, the, school the school committee, school department, the architect, finance committee, capital planning for their creativity and flexibility in developing this plan for your review tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Cole. Mr. Foskett. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Charlie Foskett, Precinct 8, and uh, Mr. Moderator. Sorry. Uh, Charlie Foskett, uh, Precinct 8, and uh, Chairman of the Capital Planning Committee. And um, we'll try to use this uh, to discuss some of these issues. So the first, uh, first point, I uh, just wanted to outline the things that we'll talk about, uh, some of which you've heard from some of the speakers earlier. Um, the April 1st, uh, 2000 debt exclusion. The, the total project that we undertook, what's been accomplished to date, the funds available, and the vote. This is uh, just a summary of uh, what was explained to you by uh, Chairman Slickman a little bit, a uh, few, few moments ago, where the uh, 2000 debt exclusion for the four schools, Pierce, Dallin, Stratton, and Thompson, won by a 72% to 
28% majority. So I think we can safely say that after all these years, um, the, the voters did indeed support the renovation of the Stratton, and they still do. Uh, that's a little small to read, but let me just say that uh, one of the reasons why we're here 16 years later um, is, that, is that the uh, original state funding for the school program from the school business, uh, uh, school building administration board was frozen by Governor Romney during a fiscal crisis in the early 2000s. Then the uh, over budget and underwater SBAB was actually closed down and replaced by the MSBA. Uh, the Massachusetts School Building Authority. And that created about a five-year hiatus in our overall program. And when we finally got on to uh, seeking support from the MSBA, the MSBA declined to fund the Stratton. So um, all of the burden of, of the Stratton really uh, rests with Arlington taxpayers. This is a little schematic of the various, uh, the uh, seven schools that were uh, rebuilt over time and what they, what they cost. You can see graphically the bracket was in the uh, $9 million range in, in uh, 1998, and the Thompson was uh, just under $20 million in uh, 2013. And we're looking at a cost of about just under $16 million for the Stratton uh, in 2016. Now, one of the questions that um, taxpayers and voters might be uh, concerned about is uh, what's the actual exempt tax impact on um, the taxpayers for this program? And on this chart, which is also, I believe, in the Capital uh, Planning Committee's report that's in your hands, you can see uh, using the uh, uh, DOR inflation rate, the uh, original estimated cost of the four schools, the actual cost over time, and then the uh, construction cost in nominal dollars, and the actual construction costs discounted back in $2,000. So in the lower right-hand corner, that $42,643,000 means that the total expenditure exceeded the $34 million that was originally proposed by the school department. But this is, the question is, what was actually the tax increase that the um, voters have faced over the years during this time? If we look at this uh, next slide, which is also uh, in your capital planning report, you see the proposal for how we're going to fund the $15,793,000. And it comes from a combination of non-exempt capital budgeting, which is inside the limits of Proposition 2 and a half, some uh, savings from other capital projects, which you'd call a capital carry forward, for a total non-exempt contribution of $9,000,000. $46,206. That leaves an exempt debt requirement of $6,746,794, which can be further reduced by a planned asset sale by the, uh, an asset sale planned by the town, which will reduce it by another million dollars. So what's the impact on the actual uh, exempt tax that the taxpayers are looking at compared to what we, they were told back in 2000? And that's in this chart, which is also uh, in your capital planning report. And basically, uh, on the screen behind me, the red line is the, is the uh, assuming the original reimbursements of 63% in the first two schools and 50% uh, in the second two schools, the total expenditures discounted back to $2,000 are shown by the red line. The blue dotted line shows what the actual expenditures, including the 15973 for, uh, Thompson, for Stratton uh, are. The reason why these two come out so close is because, first of all, the town is using non-exempt capital planning dollars to fund some of these school projects, especially the uh, Thompson and the Stratton. And secondly, in the case of the Thompson and in the case of the Stratton, the town has made the decision to dispose of some assets to help contribute towards the um, uh, payment for these funds. So we've used um, non-exempt borrowing and, and the sales of assets to constrain the tax impact on the voters. So the planned impact from, from uh, 16 years ago is very close to the actual impact. In fact, the, the actual impact is under the planned impa impact of 2000, uh, six, uh, 2000, 16 years ago. So I think from the viewpoint of meeting the objectives uh, from the academic program to, to, to renovate all seven schools, 
and to meet the financial objectives set before the taxpayers, the commitment to the taxpayers was met. So we respectfully ask that, um, that you support Articles 2 and 3, which will complete the renovation uh, of the Stratton School and will actually complete the renovation of the seven school program that was started in uh, 1998, as Paul Schlickman uh, reported to you. So we, we uh, ask you to support the recommendation of the Finance Committee on Articles 2 and 3. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Foskett. Ms. LaCourt. Annie LaCourt, Precinct 15. I would like to have a resident of the town, the president of the Stratton PTO, Jane Morgan, speak to the meeting for a few minutes. If the town resident, she has a right to speak and address the meeting. Ms. Morgan. She should come forward. She's coming. Name and address for the record, ma'am. Uh, my name is Jane Morgan. Uh, I live at 172 Brattle Street in Arlington, Precinct 15. Um, I'm a Precinct 15 resident. I'm a mom of four kids. I have a third grader at Stratton. I have two first graders at Stratton, and I have a two-year-old. So we are going to be at Stratton for like another decade, um, which is great. It's really good, um, and we really want to be there. And um, I'm here to speak very briefly in support of both Articles 2 and 3. Um, for Article 2, on behalf of the parents at Stratton, we appreciate the town and the school department have found an appropriate solution to the challenging problem of where to house the Stratton community during our renovation. Using modulars on site at Stratton keeps our school community together at a time when no other elementary school was in a position to accommodate us. Um, as a host school for all the other elementary school rebuilds, we recognize that next year will require some patience and adjustment, uh, but we look forward very much to watching our school rebuild happen in real time. In terms of Article 3, as an elementary community, we are appreciative of the town's continued commitment to rebuild all of Arlington's elementary schools, and we're grateful that it's our turn. Uh, we feel as though the school department has been especially open to working with Stratton parents during the feasibility and design phases of this project, and their spirit of openness and collaboration really make our families real stakeholders in the process and also the final outcome. Um, I've seen some of the sketches and mock-ups um, and some of the ideas that we're looking at, and I know that my kids are gonna feel as though they're walking into a very new, very functional, and very updated space. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, in September 2017. Um, so we would like to thank members of the school department, the school committee, the permanent down building committee, the capital planning committee, the finance committee, and the town manager's office for their dedication and commitment to the Stratton project. And we hope that you will vote in favor of articles two and three tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Morgan. For myself, I would just like to say that I'm very much looking forward to finally having a construction project in my front yard. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Harrington, Stephen. Time, 20 years um, to get this to done. Um, I'm glad that Mr. Cole spoke. He gave the reason why we have to do it now, the compressed cycle. But, you know, it still feels like we're being rushed to do something. And so, I'm not opposed to this, but I'd like to ask some questions, Mr. Moderator, if I may. When I look at the um, Capital Planning Committee report and the um, voted language for Article 3, specifically, it says that there's um, $499,268 coming from the Phase 3 Community Safety Building Renovation Project. Does that mean that that project is completed? Mr. Moderator? Mr. Foskett or Mr. Cole, either one can answer the question. John Cole, Permanent Town Building Committee. Uh, the final phase of the community safety building is nearing completion. We expect it to be done in August or September. Uh, the project is going along very well, contrary to prior phases, which were total nightmares. 
and we have voted as a committee to release $500,000 back to the town for use on other capital projects. So the project's done, or will be in September? It will be done in August. Okay, thank you. Um, the second question I had, we saw uh, Mr. Foskett show us, you know, sort of the, the um, uh, if you look at your capital planning report on page three, you'll see that, you know, there's $42 million have been spent in actual construction costs in $2,000 uh, versus $34 million for project value. You know, that all depends on what rate of inflation you use. And um, I'll draw your attention to like 2004 through 2008, where the rate of inflation was 5 6%. And you know, there's a footnote that says how it's supposed to be calculated, and it's the CPIU for Boston, Brockton, and Nashua. And um, those aren't the numbers. Um, it, when you use the numbers from the CPIU, it comes out to $46 million. So the difference from 34 that the voters approved and the actual expenses today of 46 million isn't quite as um, compelling that somehow the voters agreed to overspend it by you know, more than 35%. Finally, I'd like to make one more point. In the um, uh, non-exempt monies that were transferred over in Mr. Foskett's uh, presentation, he had a million dollars for a uh, sale of a building. Uh, that building is a former DAV uh, up on Mass Ave, up near the, um, um, there's some tire place up there. And um, that building's assessed for 300000 a little more than $300,000. And so it's quite generous to say, oh, there's a million dollars that were taken off from the sale of a building so that we somehow fit in under the, the cap that the voters approved back in the year 2000, the $34 million. In fact, um, it's nowhere near a million dollars. It's more like 340,000. It's a dump. Um, so uh, I'm sure that that million is overly optimistic. Um, so given the rate of inflation change and the over optimistic, it looks to me like we're actually not doing what the voters approved in 2000. Um, so uh, be that as it may, I'll still uh, vote to support this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Jameson. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Gordon Jamison, Precinct 12. Um, I might have missed this, but I have one very quick question. Um, what is the current capacity of the Stratton? And does the capacity stay the same, or does it increase given our pressures in that regard after the rebuild? Um, Dr. Bode is still No here one or? mentioned the capacity. Dr. Bode's getting your answer. Kathleen Bode, Superintendent. We have about a little over 400, 412 students. Um, when Stratton is completed, we, we have three classrooms that could be repurposed, and the same thing will be true after the renovation. Uh, with the projection that we have from December from Dr. McKibben's numbers, Stratton is only going to change slightly in enrollment, maybe in the neighborhood of 20 to 30 students, perhaps tops. But in, in the new configuration, there's some swing space as required. So the rooms that could be converted, you mentioned, that would be swing There'll be three classrooms. They will be used, but they could yeah. be converted to, to additional classroom space, yes. Okay, and they'd be used for art or music now, or just? We will have an art and music room. The goal in all of our schools is to keep yeah. a dedicated art and music room. Okay, I just, I just didn't understand what the, what, the, what the stated capacity of the building is versus um, now versus the future versus the current number of students. Capacity is a uh, it's 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 a, it's sort of a tough way to look at the the building because sometimes um, you can have classes that are very small numbers. We have a, we have three supported learning centers up there with with yep. um, smaller class size numbers than you might have in a general ed classroom. The gentleman it, over here stood up. The, the gentleman Mr. over Water, here is the principal yeah. of Stratton School. Oh, Do you have additional information that will help Mr. Right. James? Perhaps he might be able to enlighten us further. Thank you, All right. Dr. Bode. Mr. Hanna. Okay. Dr. Bode, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Michael Hanna, I'm principal at Stratton School. Uh, right now, those classrooms, are, or, or could be classrooms, are being used for other programming. 
Um, right now, one of them is being used for teaching non-native English speaking students. It's an entire classroom. We probably wouldn't need an entire classroom for that, so that's why it's a swing space. Another is an administrative uh, suite for uh, special education, which again can be contracted into some other environment. And then uh, finally, the third one is a uh, classroom, but as Dr. Bodhi mentioned, it's currently servicing a special education population, which if, again, if pressed, we could contract into another special education classroom. So as the principal, you feel comfortable that after the rebuild, given the projections, you'll be in good shape as far as space? Very. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Peluso. Ted Peluso from uh, Precinct 6. Uh, I like to keep things simple. Uh, when you have a school committee, a finance committee, a capital planning committee, a town building committee, a paid architect, I assume that's who that fellow was, right? And you have people who say, this is what we need, right? Now, we can spend a lot of time because I guess everybody in this room has an engineering degree. And I'm sure everybody in this room are architects as well. And I do understand that it is our job to look at the cost of everything and the whole bit. But it does come down to something simple. Let's do it right, that's all. Either yes or no, but do it right. Thank you, Mr. Peluso. Mr. McCabe, Mark. Uh, Mark McCabe, Precinct 2. I stand to terminate all debate on Articles 2 and 3 and all matters before it. Okay, we have a motion to terminate debate on Articles 2 and 3. We're going to take a vote on that article as soon as Michael's ready. That's a two-third vote. One yes, two no. Uh, Michael McCabe, who just spoke. Ready? One vote. Vote. Um, one yes, two no. This is to terminate debate on Articles Two and three. Yeah. Loop up under ninety six. We have a motion to terminate debate. It is in the affirmative, one hundred seventy six to twenty. The debate is terminated on Article 2 and 3. So we have before us the recommended votes of the Finance Committee. First, we're going to do Article 2 for the sum of $31 million. This does require bonding, so we're going to use our clickers. It's a two-third vote. So 3.1? Yeah, it is. 3.1 million. It's a good thing these things don't have to be read out. As soon as you're ready, Michael. And go ahead and vote. One, yes, two put the money, two, no, you don't want to do it. One for yes, two for no. Okay, time's up. Is an affirmative vote 194 in the positive, four in the negative? That's a pretty overwhelming vote, folks. Thank you very much. Okay, we have before us we have before us a recommended vote of the Finance Committee. And this again is for borrowing. I'm not going to read the numbers out because there's a lot of them. Um, as soon as we're ready. Again, it's a two-third vote. We'll use our clickers and go ahead and vote. One for yes, two for no.
Okay, time's up. 199 in the affirmative, zero. So you want to make... It's a unanimous vote, and I so declare it. Thank you very much. The town appreciates it. Now, that brings us to close Article 2 and 3, brings us to Article 4. We have before us a recommended vote of the Finance Committee. Mr. Tosti. Mr. Moderator, uh, respectfully request to the town meeting uh, for 10 minutes for myself and for the town manager. In other words, total. Um, Mr. Tosti has requested 10 minutes. All in favor, please say yes. yes. Opposed? You have your 10 minutes, Mr. Tosti. Okay, actually, I'm going to take one minute, and the manager will take the rest. Um, town manager will follow me as chairman of the Aroma Task Force uh, to explain what the group has done to date and the topics going forward. I will explain why the vote is worded the way it is. Um, before the vote, before the bids came in on the Stratton modulars, we had planned to use funds remaining uh, from the police station project uh, to be transferred to the capital budget for this purpose, for the uh, uh, Thompson modulars. But when the bids came in so far over the estimates, all of the remaining monies in the capital budget uh, had to be used for the Stratton School. I mean, we, we, uh, we had to fund it, we had to keep going, uh, and so we basically uh, stripped out all the, all the remaining accounts. Uh, so there was no, no money left in the capital budget. Since the tax rate has been set, the decision uh, was made or the rec to make a recommendation to utilize the town's reserve fund, uh, which had been built up uh, a little bit higher each year over the years uh, to an amount that could take care of this uh, to get the project going. But since the article was already before the town meeting in the warrant, the finance committee felt it was inappropriate to not ask the town meeting for their opinion. So that is the purpose of this vote. It's a resolution uh, for you uh, to see if you will support this. If you vote no, the finance committee will not vote to transfer the money for the modulars for the Thompson. If you vote yes, we will proceed to get this project moving as soon as possible. Uh, I'd like to ask the town manager uh, to give the background on the uh, Roman task force and what's happened to date. Thank you. Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. Excuse my voice. <clears throat> uh, I, I'll do my best to not use all eight minutes. Uh, so building on what Chairman Tosti just uh, spoke about, um, going back into the fall, uh, or actually back into the summer, uh, after looking at there being several years of enrollment growth within the school district, the school department decided that it was uh, very appropriate to perform a demographic study to analyze the growth and provide a future-looking forecast in terms of the enrollment and, and what it would look like over the course of the next decade. So that forecast was uh, <clears throat> produced by Dr. McKibben, and some of you may have came to the public meeting that the school committee held where that forecast was discussed in detail. And initially, that forecast predicted the growth of approximately 1,000 students over the next 10 years in the Arlington School District. Uh, since the original release, when we got actual numbers on October 1 of this past fall, uh, that number has been uh, modified by, uh, by Dr. McKibben and reduced to approximately 700 students uh, <clears throat> to grow over the next um, 10 years. So. This forecast prompted the superintendent and I, uh, after consultation with both the Board of Selectmen and the school committee, to call together a task force that we named the School Enrollment Task Force to study and address the capacity issues that this forecasted growth would cause uh, in terms of space in our actual school buildings. This task force was made up of myself, the superintendent, three members of the school committee, two members of the Board of Selectmen, the chairman of the Finance Committee, chairman of the Capital Planning Committee, and the chairman of the Permanent Town Building Committee. We met uh, a number of times over uh, the course of late 2015, and we've met once in 2016. And thus far, there's been a few key agreements that led to this recommendation or resolution here tonight. Uh, that agreement that was unanimously decided by the task force was to go forward um, and uh, identify the need for two modular classrooms at the Thompson School next year to address capacity issues. And also, there was a more uh, conceptual agreement about the need to address specific, uh, excuse me, space issues at the Otteson Middle School based on forecasts. <clears throat> a few other areas that we're going to continue to look at, uh, beginning at our next meeting scheduled currently for February 23rd, 
uh, we'll be looking at potential classroom and shared space expansion, uh, permanent expansion at the Thompson School, and also the need to process and decide on what the proper course of action is at the Odyssey Middle School, whether it be on site or at another site in town. So we have a lot of work to do over the course of the rest of this winter and spring leading up to town meeting, and what the hope is that we'll have at the very least a report, but most likely recommendations for this town meeting to consider uh, at the spring for further addressing of these uh, space needs that our enrollment growth is causing. And happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, Stephen Harrington. Stephen Harrington, Precinct 13. I have two amendments to this article. I don't oppose uh, modules of the Thompson, but this is a horrible funding argument. You can see that it's rushed and it's not a good idea. I'm going to try to convince you that it's not a good idea. So my first amendment, if I could have it up on the screen, is that I just want to change three words from the town's reserve fund to the town's capital budget. And why does it matter? We're building, we're spending capital expense. We're spending money that's a capital expense. The reserve fund is for operating expenses. It's so that we don't have to have another override for a number of years. If we're going to spend the money out of the reserve fund, it puts Arlington in a less physically secure position. And what that means is that you may get those new classrooms, but you're going to have services cut in about a year or two. You're going to hear all this talk about how we can't afford teachers because we need another override. This is a bad idea to take the money out of the town's reserves. It's a much better idea to take it out of the capital budget. Now, people are going to say, oh, but you know, where are you going to get the money from in the capital budget? The capital budget's not on here. It's not up. If this was a spring discussion, it could be very clear where it's coming out of the capital budget. We could have gone through the whole discussion of it. But because it's being jammed in at the last minute, and by the way, there's no dollar value associated with this appropriation. So you're in a position to offer no dollar value. You're voting on something that you're just giving a blank check out of the operating account, cash, to do something that belongs in a capital expense, in the capital budget. And so the Second Amendment, i ask you to put that up, shows that where we can get it from. We can easily get this from using Community Preservation Act money in a very good way. And the way that you do, I see Clarissa and the people who pushed for the CPA, who told us that the CPA was going to be used on capital expenses so that we could have a better budget. Well, hold them to their promise. We can use the CPA money to fund the next two playground rebuilds that are scheduled for 2017 and 2018 of about a half a million dollars each. We can use that CPA money for that. No one's decided yet where the CPA money's gonna go. We can then buy those modulars rent them through the capital budget. No extra cost keeps Arlington on a good financial footing. This article does not put us on a good financial footing. And it really comes down to you know, a question of values for Ms. Rowe and the people who supported the CPA, whether you really want to support education in the town or spend it on things like a swamp in East Arlington. And that's really for you people up there too. You're all East Arlington residents. Whether you want to educate your kids or dump it into a hole in the ground really is your choice. But by passing it as it stands, you're going to put Arlington in a bad position. And there's already rumors of an override. When the talk starts to happen, believe me, services are going to be cut. And they'll be cut in the schools. And you might have modular classrooms, but you won't have the teachers to fill them. So I urge you to vote yes on an amendment that will change it to the capital budget, and yes to use the CPA funds to keep Arlington on a good financial footing. Thank you. Okay, we have two amendments on the table. His first one is the town reserve fund. Do I have a second on that? 
been seconded. He has a second amend amendment on um, the use of the CPA money. Do we have a second on that? Okay, they've both been seconded. They are before us. Um, Mr. Carmen. Thank you, Mr. Member. Dean Carmen, Precinct 20, member of the Finance Committee. I yield all of my time to Mariah Tyrell, a resident of Arlington, who's entitled to address the meeting by right. Yes, she is. Name and precinct and address for the record, please. Uh, good evening. My name is Mariah Tyrell. I live at Precinct 7 at 87 Harlow Street. I currently have three children at the Thompson Elementary School, a fifth grader, a third grader, a kindergarten, and a kindergartner, as well as a three-year-old that will enter in the fall of 2018. Yes, I am one of the main reasons that the town of Arlington is facing these enrollment challenges. I stand before you tonight in support of the Finance Committee's recommendation to add two temporary classrooms at Thompson for next year because they are desperately needed. I am hoping that the slides I am about to show you will demonstrate the urgency of this need. At the same time, I stand in disagreement with the School Enrollment Task Force's decision to not recommend additional measures at this time, specifically the appropriation of money for architectural plans and designs for a permanent addition. The enrollment challenges at Thompson and in East Arlington in particular are just beginning. We have a long road ahead of us. The children on this slide are my own, William, Caroline, Lucy, and Peter. Since they are situated within the time frame of the school's projected growth, I thought I would use them tonight to show you how the enrollment challenges are affecting them and all of their fellow classmates. Next slide, please. This is my oldest son, William, and his friend, Dylan, who are in fifth grade this year. They attended kindergarten at the old Thompson School building, spent two years at the Stratton School during the rebuild, and came back to the brand new school for third grade. Their class sizes have been creeping up every year since coming back to the new school, and now William is in a class of 30 and Dylan 29. These boys have more students in their classes than any other elementary class across the district, and this was because there was not another classroom available for a third section. That is a third class for the fifth graders. The Thompson School with 19 classrooms is over its capacity by one, and thus on a daily basis, these fifth graders have less face time with their teacher than any other elementary school student. Next slide, please. Most of you here in the room tonight have probably heard about what is referred to as the McKibben Report, which projects the enrollment growth in all of our schools for the next 10 years. Here is a graph that shows the growth at the Thompson School based on McKibben's projections. The blue arched line demonstrates how our enrollment will grow over the next 10 years. The orange straight line on the bottom demonstrates what the school was built for, 380 students. As you can see, the Thompson School is just beginning its climb. The red star on the chart shows that our current enrollment is 435 students. This star is actually above McKibben's newest projections, which were just released in December, thus indicating that his projections for our growth may actually be too low. It's also important to note that since school started in September, our enrollment has grown by 10 students. While it looks like the graph starts to drop off after the 10-year period, in fact, the projections state that 480 students is where the school will level out. This is 100 students higher than the building's capacity. Next slide, please. This next picture is my daughter, Caroline. She is currently in third grade. Next year, when the two fifth grades leave Thompson and the projected number of four kindergarten classes come in, the school will be two classrooms too small. If portable classrooms are not approved for the Thompson School tonight, Caroline's class could be chosen as the class to be blended, which means her four current se sections could become three, and her class would likely have 27 or more kids in it. If portable classes are not approved tonight, it also means that the art room will be turned into a classroom. If the art room is taken away, the art teachers will visit each room with their supplies on a cart, and the Thompson School will be the only school in the district without a dedicated art room. It will be very hard for the students to be able to complete the level and kinds of projects they currently do, such as Caroline's painting in this photo. It would be a huge detriment to all of the students in the school to lose such a valuable, enriching space. 
As I stated at the beginning, I fully support the recommendation by the Finance Committee to fund two modular classrooms for next fall, as I do not want to see Caroline and her fellow students at the Thompson School miss out on valuable educational milestones that will be lost in overcrowded classrooms. Next slide, please. But I also have two other children that you see here in this slide. Lucy is currently in kindergarten at the Thompson School, and if a plan for permanent construction is not in place and executed for the fall of 2018, she is projected to experience class sizes of 27 or more students by the time she is in second grade. Next slide, please. By the time Lucy is in second grade, there are projected to be 482 students in the school that was built for 380, and class sizes for every grade will be large. By the time Peter is in third grade, the enrollment will have reached its peak of 500 students. With smaller class sizes, teachers can get to know their students better and thus ensure that each student receives appropriate instruction based on their styles and needs. This is especially true for students from low-income families and for English language learners. The Thompson School and the Hardy School both have the highest number of students in both of these categories than any other school in the district. That is why it is especially critical that our school has the space that it needs. So please vote yes tonight on this article to provide a one-year Band-Aid at the Thompson, but know that this will not solve the problem long-term and that additional steps will soon need to be taken. William, Caroline, Lucy, Peter, and all of their classmates and future classmates, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Rell. Mr. Liggett, Stephen Liggett. Oh, he had his hand up. Don't know where he went. Uh, Mr. Leonard. Oh, wait, he's getting up. He heard me. Wait, John. The first guy got up. No, you're up. Ms. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Steve Liggett, Precinct 9. Excellent. Good evening. I am the proud parent of two children in the Arlington Public Schools, a third grader at Thompson and a sixth grader at Otteson. I stand before you tonight in support of Article 4, which will provide critically needed classroom space at the Thompson Elementary next year. I stand here to applaud the decision by the School Enrollment Task Force to recommend adding two modular classrooms for next year so that we will be able to keep our art room instead of turning it into another classroom. I stand here to thank the Finance and Capital Planning Committees for their efforts to secure the funding to actually pay for those modular classrooms so that we anticipate having only one grade with class sizes of 26 or above. It would be far worse if we didn't have the modulars. I stand here to express my gratitude for the support shown by the school committee, the facilities subcommittee, and Dr. Bodie as they explored alternatives and proposed solutions. I also stand here to say that two modulars at Thompson is not enough. Next slide, please. <clears throat> as you can see from the slide behind me, um, which is not that sheet, my thing has got, there we go. <clears throat> the chart behind me is showing the revised enrollment projections commissioned by the town last month, the McKibben report, for only Thompson. Since that report, as Mariah mentioned, is actually too low, I updated the numbers to use the current enrollment of 435 students instead of the projected enrollment of 425. The numbers on the chart show how many students above or below the number the school was actually intended to have. So the zero line represents the as-built capacity. Above that, uh, which is where the line is very clearly, is showing that we have more kids and additional uh, crowding. Um, with the current of 430, 435 students, the red dashed line indicates that for this school year, we are, have 54 more students in the school than it was built to hold. Next year, Thompson enrollment is projected to increase significantly, which will be addressed by Article 4, which hopefully will pass. However, the increase continues beyond next year, at which point we will need additional space. 
So far, I've only spoken about Thompson because that is the official scope of Article 4. The reality is that this is a much larger problem than just Thompson. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Here you can see that the enrol enrollment at the other elementary schools, which is the target of this slide, uh, is also above capacity in many schools. The enrollment at Bishop, the yellow line, is significantly above the capacity it was built for. It isn't projected to increase at as dramatic a rate as the Thompson, but they are already crowded and it will increase. Hardy, the dotted red line, will see increases similar to that of Thompson and face the same challenges, trailing one to two years behind. And that does not include the potential impact of the Mugar property should that pro project move forward. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Voting yes for Article 4, which I strongly urge all of you to do, is one simple step we can take tonight to reduce the overcrowding at Thompson for next year. But the growth in the school enrollment is a town-wide challenge, and we clearly have a lot more work ahead of us to meet those challenges. To that end, I will be submitting this exact article for our spring town meeting so that this body will have an opportunity to continue this dialogue. It is not clear today exactly what the best options are or the best combination of options are to address the enrollment challenges we face. There are many opinions and not nearly enough facts at this point to decide which options are the best to address both the short term and the strategic needs of our community to determine which options best align with the values that we espouse for educating our children. Between now and April, we need to figure out which of these options, those that you see above or something else, are the appropriate ones that we want to recommend to move forward. In April, this body will have an opportunity to approve the next steps. Final slide, please. This final slide includes the enrollment projections for the Otteson Middle School. I think this is a case where a picture truly is worth a thousand words. I look forward to working with many, you, many of you in the coming weeks, and I imagine I'll be standing before you once again in April. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Leggett. Mr. Leonard. <laughs> We're not the English Parliament. Mr. Leonard. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Leonard, Precinct 17. Having a little bit of trouble with this particular article, ladies and gentlemen of town meeting, on the previous two votes, Article 2, the school was named and the price was named. And Article 3, the school was named and the price appropriation was named. And Article 4, which we're talking about right now, the school is named, but it's not named in what I would call the nuts and bolts of the article. In the, in the article itself, it's calling for at any of the town's school buildings. Well, we have seven elementary schools, a middle school, a high school, and as far as I can read this, it basically means that if anything comes up at any of those schools in the future, this is the sum of money that we're talking about that we can, any particular time, turn around and say the bishop needs this, the Dallin needs this, et cetera. Ladies and gentlemen, you gave us the approval in Article 4, so we're doing this by appropriating more and more money. What I would have liked to have seen is that the removal, I know it's an amendment, Mr. Moderator, and I actually had the amendment made up, but I lost it to remove it at any of the town school building, and we were talking about in the voted section that it is the Thompson School, I would have liked to have seen the Thompson School included in place of at any of the town school building. I'm, I'm not following. Um, I'm reading the town meeting supports transfer funds by the finance committee from the town reserve fund, blah, 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 for temporary classroom space for Thompson School. 
I'm talking I'm, about, I have a copy here of the Finance Committee. You're, to, you're talking about the recommended vote, though. It says to see if the... To see if the town will vote a sum of money, et cetera, et cetera, at any You're reading the, the warrant, John. You got to read the recommended vote, remember? Do you have the recommended vote in front of you? The recommended vote, I'm going to read it for you. It's in your finance committee report. Town meeting supports a transfer of funds by the finance committee from the town's reserve funds of a sum of money to fund temporary classroom space for the Thompson School and for costs, costs incidental and related there too. So remember, we, we get the warrant that warns everybody back weeks ago, and we got the, unfortunately we got it like Friday or Saturday, the FinCom report that has the recommended vote that we're voting on today. You're reading the warrant. All right, well, I admit then maybe where I'm confused is I don't see that the Thompson is up there in the warrant where it is in the Stratton on the previous two votes. M Mr. Chapelain's going to take a second and show you the recommended vote of the FinCom. May I, Mr. Moderator, take, just take a shot at explaining to John our rationale? Okay. <clears throat> Adam Chapelain, Town Manager. So, Mr. Leonard, when we filed this warrant article, we wanted to provide maximum flexibility for the School Enrollment Task Force to consider what its recommendations would be. Before we came to the final recommendation to, two, to place two modulars at Thompson, there was a lot of discussion about where a solution might lie in terms of temporary solutions for space. So we worded the article generally so that we would have maximum flexibility, and then the vote itself is what contains the reference to the Thompson School for the placement of the modulars. Interesting. Does that clarify it, John? It clarifies it a little bit, Mr. Moderator. Okay. Uh, well, again, I support uh, Mr. Harrington's two amendments. I think, uh, if nothing else, we should have a number figure on this article in some manner, shape, or form as we did on the previous two articles. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Carmen. Yeah. You had your hand up at one point. No? Okay, John Deist. I thought you did. John Deist, Precinct 13, and a member of the Finance Committee. Uh, I, I'd like, like to sort of comment to you about how we live our lives. You guys are nervous. We do that in two ways. There's a long term planning, for example, at the end of this meeting, I plan to drive home and go to bed. But I don't plan precisely how I'm going to go home. I might go uh, one or two streets or three street different paths to go home. A car may approach me, and I'll have to stop, or I might get a red light. That short-term planning is very uncertain. The attendance in these schools is very uncertain. Now, I'm not saying that any of these graphs are inappropriate, but you have to realize that all around those graphs is all kinds of uncertainty. That's exactly what the reserve fund is for, to fund situations of uncertainty. The situation we have right now with these modules is a situation that occurred almost completely independently of the long-term planning of the Capital Planning Committee. The Capital Planning Committee projects and, very, in a, and in a very orderly fashion recommends funding for us and then we vote the money to do the, the things that generally speaking that the, planning, the Capital Planning Committee has recommended to us. I can't think of a time in the past 20 years or so when we didn't pretty much vote the Capital Plan as it was put forward to us. But it's a plan that's based on long-term projections, and they cannot handle uncertainties. That's exactly what the Reserve Fund is for, to handle the uncertainties that arise as a result of something like what just happened at the Thompson School. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Mr. Harris. Uh, 
Mr. Moderator. Name and precinct. Oh, I'm sorry, EJ Harris, Precinct 5. Um, Mr. Moderator, I feel like I don't have a lot of facts about this article, and I hate that feeling. So with your indulgence, I'd like to take a little bit of a fishing expedition. Um, the first question I had um, about the proposed amendment is, can the CPA money be lawfully used in the way the amendment proposes? We, as a town meeting, cannot direct the CPA how to spend the money. The CPA can use the money for parks and recreations. So in principle, it could be used in the way it suggests, even though we have no control over whether it would be. Is that correct? At their prerogative to our, we get to eventually get a thumbs up or down vote on it. Is that correct? Yep. All right. But we can't amend whatever the committee proposes. Is that, do I have that right? Uh, Mr. Heim? We can, can, we we can only up or down? All right. Well, that's why we have town council. Can you? Yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear from a lawyer. <laughs> Good evening, guys. I'm town council. So the Community Preservation Committee will be the one basically vetting proposals for use of CPA funds. If um, the, the town meeting essentially votes to approve or not approve those monies, if the town meeting doesn't, approve, doesn't vote to approve it, the money stays in the CPA fund. All right. Um, can anybody ballpark how much money we're talking about? A little bit? Just a chapter link. Kinda? <laughs> Something? Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. So we've began uh, uh, negotiations or discussions with the modular provider for the Stratton School project and asked if they could uh, consider amending their contract to provide two additional modular classrooms for next year for the Thompson School. And the range we've looked at is somewhere between 200 and 250,000 for two classrooms. All right, excellent. Um, how much is in the reserve fund-ish, again? Mr. Foskett, oh no, excuse me, Mr. Tosti has an answer. One million dollars. Uh, there's an extra 200,000 that is set aside for uh, special education in the schools. So for general purposes, $1 million. All right. So we're using a fifth of it-ish, hopefully. All right. Um, can, and this is only for one year. That was the other thing is there's no time scale in this article. Do we anticipate this being? Like one year the, what we are discussing right now is only for the next school year. Is that correct? And like yeah, the go ahead, Adam. enrollment task Chaplain. force plans to give us a longer term proposal in the spring. Adam Chaplin, town manager. Uh, so we, the, the quote I mentioned would be based on a one year lease. We are going to get some additional quotes in terms of whether or not we might purchase these for future needs, lease them on a longer term basis and see whether or not it makes it more cost competitive. But ultimately, one of the considerations that the task force will be looking at is permanent construction at the Thompson, and that would make these modulars not needed at that facility. And Mr. Moderator, it, would it be the committee's, you might want to stay, would it be the committee's hope, I apologize, would it be the committee's hope uh, to be able to report more fully on those questions at the regular town meeting in the spring? All right. Um, I think that's quite enough fish for now. Um, the Book of Revelation warns us of uh, wars and rumors of wars. I feel the municipal version is overrides and rumors of overrides. Um, I definitely feel the level of trepidation that I feel when I read the Book of Revelation, but I think I'm going to end up supporting this article. Okay. Um, Mr. Foskey, you had your hand up. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Charles Foskett, uh, Precinct 8, and I'm um, Vice Chairman of the Finance Committee as well as Chairman of the Capital Planning Committee. And I'd like to address the two uh, proposed amendments to this article. Uh, first of all, I'm, uh, I'm concerned that the uh, proposer of the amendments is confused about um, the use of the reserve fund versus the use of an override stabilization fund. When he raised the question of long-term overrides or what's going to happen to our operating budget. That's really governed by the override stabilization fund into which we vote money in the town when there's an override. And we use that to, to stabilize the budget. Right now, I think it's been six years. 
since the last override and probably go seven or eight years before we have to look at another override. This is a long-term funding mechanism. On the other hand, the reserve fund, the $1.2 million that Mr. Tosti just mentioned, is voted by you every year at town meeting. It's, in, it's uh, I forget, I forget the, the, here it is, it's uh, budget number 26, and we voted last year $1.2 million. And this is used, as Mr. Dice said, for emergencies, for problems, for things that are not anticipated. So last year, as I recall, uh, we used a certain large amount of the reserve fund, believe it or not, for snow. <laughs> now this year we have a problem with our schools. And it's a problem that, you know, as Yogi Berra said, predicting the f making predictions is hard, especially when they're about the future. And, the, and the, um, the school population has been growing faster than people anticipated. So we have to address it. But this article that's being proposed is going to address it out of the Finance Committee's Reserve Fund. And, what, and the Finance Committee has the authority to spend up to all of that $1.2 million without the vote of town meeting. But what Mr. Tosti said is, we don't want to spend that money unless you support this program. That's what we're looking for. Now, I'd like to address the, the second uh, proposed amendment, which is use of the CPA funds. Now, some of you uh, might remember that I opposed the CPA um, Act when it was being voted by the town. Uh, however, just like I pointed out to you earlier that the citizens of the town voted by a large majority to, to rebuild those schools 16 years ago. The citizens of the town voted for the CPA Act. And as town meeting members, we have to respect that. So last year, uh, at the last annual uh, town meeting, the Capital Planning Committee on uh, page five reported on the Community Preservation Act. And I'll read it to you. The current capital plan has segregated most such eligible expenditures, that is CPA eligible expenditures, into a funding category of quote unquote CPA. You may remember we have bond cash other, now we have bond cash other and CPA. If CPA fund, uh, well we, we, we make this segregation so that the CPA committee, at the time we wrote this, it hadn't yet been formed, the CPA could, committee could decide on their own as an independent organization whether or not to fund those particular projects. And we said, if CPA funding is unavailable, the Capital Planning Committee remains committed to considering such projects in the capital plan in the future. Now, when we segregated those projects into the CPA category, that left some money in the capital budget, in the long-term capital plan. And what did we do with it? Let me tell you what we did with it. It's funding the Stratton. You voted for it tonight with the, uh, in, in, in Articles 2 and 3. The non-exempt expenses that you voted for tonight were freed up by the CPA vote of last year. And this will be reflected in the five-year capital plan that you will see at the annual town meeting. So what I'm trying to tell you is that, first of all, the use of the reserve fund that Mr. Tosti has proposed is perfectly legitimate, rational, and in fact should be done. And secondly, it's both unreasonable from a governance viewpoint for us to demand that the uh, CPA committee spend money on recreation. And secondly, even if we demanded it, the money in the capital budget has already been put into the Stratton School. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, it's 9.30. We're going to take a short seven-minute break. When we come back, Mr. Oster will have the floor. Please come in and take your seat. We're going to get going again. Please come in. Let's go. <laughs> Mr. Tremble, you can take your coat off and stay a few minutes. Yeah, sit down. Have a seat. Take your coat off. Make yourself at home. Mr. Oster has the floor. Please come in and be quiet.
That's better. I feel comfortable now. Adam Oster. Adam, you're up. You had your hand up, right? Did you have your hand up? Yeah, you're up. No, you are. Uh, Mr. Moderator, Adam Oster, Precinct 3, and I move to end debate and vote immediately on everything before us. On all, on all matters on before all the motion? On all matters before us under the article. Oh, okay. Do we have a motion to terminate debate on all matters under the article? It's been seconded. All right, soon as um, we're ready, we're going to take a vote to terminate debate. All in favor of terminating debate, press one for yes, no for you do not want to terminate debate. One for yes, two for no. Two thirds vote required. Debate is terminated, 173 in the affirmative, 15 in the negative. <coughs> Debate's terminated. That brings us to the actual votes. So we're going to proceed as follows. <clears throat> First, we're going to vote on Mr. Harrington's shorter amendment that reads, um, change the words town reserve fund to capital budget. So first, we're going to have a yes or no vote to amend to include that. Is that clear? Yes, OK. So as soon as you're ready, go ahead and vote one. Yes to amend, two, no, you do not want to amend it. One to amend, two, no, you don't. It is a negative vote, 163 in the negative, 27, the amendment loses. That ends that. We have now the longer of the two amendments by Mr. Harrington, um, directing us, directing the CPA money to be used in a certain way. As soon as we're ready, we'll vote one, yes, you want to amend and add that to the recommended vote. Two, no, you do not. Go ahead and vote one, yes, two, no. <coughs> That uh, amendment also loses 166 in the negative, 26 in the affirmative. So that does not prevail either. So now we have before us the recommended vote of the Finance Committee as presented without amendment. So we're going to vote for that. One yes, two no. And go ahead and vote. One yes, two no. <coughs> That passes 182 in the affirmative, 11 in the negative. It's an affirmative vote and I so declare it. That ends Article 4. We have now before us Article 5, Collective Bargaining. Mr. Tosti, do you wish to speak to this? Very briefly, um, this is the Collective Bargaining Agreement uh, between the town and Local 680. Um, with this settlement, uh, the, uh, all of the town unions will have been settled through July 1, 2018. Uh, it's all the same percentages, 2%, and these taken from funds that you appropriated uh, into a wage reserve last year uh, on this. So the Finance Committee uh, unanimously recommends favorable action. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tosti. Um, Ma'am. Hi, 
Hi, good evening, Linda Hansen, Precinct 7. I'm also the president of the Arlington Education Association. I rise to say that yes, I will be voting to ratify this collective bargaining agreement this evening, but I'm also here um, at the front of the room to talk to you uh, to just raise the question about the direction the town is taking in terms of contracting out the custodial jobs that belong to this union um, that come under this contract and transferring formerly union jobs to private contractors. Maybe you saw some sign holders out there this evening. Um, some of the jobs have already been switched over and others are in the process. Ma'am? Uh, Ma so I guess it comes under this contract. But you're really not in school. Okay, so. That's I, something you have to bring up with the school committee, how they hire and who they hire and who they don't hire. Well, I, I guess I just felt it was relevant because it does come under this contract. We're just funding the contracts as passed. We don't, this, this town meeting, we don't determine hiring and firing and staffing priorities. That's up to the manager and the school committee. All right. Well, although now it comes under the town facilities, the combined facilities director, right? Um, and then under the town manager. Adam, is that right? Okay, yes. So, so you have to bring up your questions to the selectmen and the manager. Okay. I'm sorry, that's not within what our, our purview. Anyone else wish to speak to the article? Hearing none, we have the force to recommend the vote of the Finance Committee for the Union Local 680 funding contract. Already, so one for yes, you agree, two, no. As soon as we're ready, we'll take a vote on that. And go ahead and vote one yes, two, no. If you're in favor, one. If you're not, two, no. It's an affirmative vote. It's a unanimous vote, 182 to zero. We so declare it. That terminates Article 5. That brings us to Article 6. Uh, we have a recommended vote on Article 6 of no action. Um, five built to selectmen and the FinCom. All in favor of no action, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? It's recommended vote of no action. I so declare it's unanimous. And that closes Article 6. Brings us to Article 7. Minuteman Regional Technical School. Amendment to the district agreement. Um, who's going to speak to this first? Mr. Dunn. Seven. Seven is no action. No. Oh, seven's a no action too. I'm sorry. Seven is no action, but just a sentence, okay. Mr. Moderator. Article seven, no action. All in favor of no action, please say yes. 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 Opposed? It is a recommended vote of no action, and so I, I so declare it. That brings us to Article eight. I'm sorry, everybody. Mr. Dunn has arisen under eight. Hmm? Clock. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'm Dan Dunn, member of the Board of Selectmen. When you talk about Minuteman, it's often hard to choose where to start. There's more than 40 years of history and it all matters to some degree. I'm choosing to start with May of 2010. Minuteman was seeking funds for a feasibility study for a new school and Arlington was loath to provide them without a new regional agreement. This town meeting approved Article 58, which approved the funds so long as Minuteman agreed to create a regional agreement task force and it specified certain terms that needed to be considered. Minutemen agreed, and the task force moved forward in 2010 and 2011. Progress was made, but the result was not agreeable to all towns. A second group was created, built on the work of the first, and met through 2012 and 2013. The result was a proposal from the Minuteman School Committee that went to all 16 towns in the spring of 2014. 10 towns voted yes, including Arlington and Lexington. One voted no, Wayland and five didn't vote, including Boxborough, Lincoln, and Belmont. That was spring of 2014. In the spring of 2015, this past year, there were efforts to get the remaining six towns on board. They all failed. Wayland and Boxborough in particular were not satisfied that they would have the ability to withdraw from the district, which they really wanted. The stalemate per persisted until October 28th of this past year. Weston hosted a meeting of the members of 16 boards of selectmen, and the selectman for Boxborough, Vince Amoroso, pro 
proposed a framework where his town could both approve the proposed regional agreement and be certain that the town would be permitted to leave. That framework is a part of the agreement that we're voting on tonight. There are seven towns who are considering leaving the district. Each of those seven towns is having a stay or go vote at their special town meeting and also voting to approve this regional agreement. Our approval of the regional agreement is our consent to let them leave. On, on March 1st, the votes will be done. My personal estimation that four towns are likely to leave and three of them are going to have very interesting town meetings. <laughs> that proposal broke the logjam, and for the next 50 days, there were a flurry of meetings, phone calls, emails, negotiations between the selectmen from 16 towns. The result is the proposed regional agreement we are voting on tonight. So that's enough about the history. Let's talk about this proposal. I want to clearly state that this vote does not ask for any appropriation. Further, the vote tonight makes no commitment to the building project that Minuteman is going to propose for our consideration at the spring town meeting. The building project is a separate issue that will receive due consideration in the future. What tonight's vote does do is pave the way for a better Minuteman. In your Board of Selectmen's packet, I meant to bring mine up and I forgot, uh, open it up and you can flip and you flip past the uh, red line version and you slip past the final version and uh, you'll get to three pages that are titled Side-by-Side -side Comparison. Uh, that comparison was provided by Minuteman. If you look at that side-by-side -side comparison, the second row I want to call out because it means that Arlington is going to pay a smaller share of any future capital budget uh, the, because of the change in the calculations. Whether it's the project that's current under proposal or a future one, you know, decades in the future, we're getting a better deal based on because of that second row. The third row is perhaps the most important of them all. That change means that Arlington will finally get a proportional vote in the governance of Minuteman. So will Lexington and so will Belmont. The importance of this governance change cannot be overstated. All of these highlights and some of the changes that didn't make that highlight real matter. I don't have time to go through them all here. I'm ready to answer any questions you may have, and Minuteman Superintendent Ed Boquillen is here to answer questions as well. This agreement uh, gives Arlington more power to control our own participation within the region. I understand that there's a substitute motion coming, and I've provided a response to it, which you can find on your chairs. The only point I wish to make right now is that we're working on a deadline. The selectmen from 16 towns built this, this framework to work fast, and we all agreed to call special town meetings and resolve the regional agreement by March 1st. The substitute motion would kill this deal. This proposal deserves a clean vote, a yes or a no. The Board of Selectmen uh, voted tonight. Uh, it's, it's a 5-0 support, not 4-0, as is in the, 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 we are up to five votes. It has the support of the Finance Committee and the support of the Capital Planning Committee. We ask for your support for the motion as put forth by the Selectmen. Also available is um, our School Committee at Minuteman Representative Sue Scheffler, if you have any questions of her. Mr. Hainer. Mr. R Mr. Moderator Bill Hainer, Precinct 2. The purpose of this motion is to establish a committee that will provide town meeting with critical financial and budgetary information to make an informed decision. It would be expected that the proposed committee would determine answers to some of the following questions. What is the number of in-district students that would make Minuteman Tech financially solvent? What is the average cost of an in-district tuition and out-of-district tuition under the current agreement compared to under the proposed agreement? What, if anything, will the new district agreement do to reduce the current over-reliance on out-of-district students? Has a five-year projection been done on what the tuition cost will be in the new agreement goes into effect? If not, why? As stated in the December 2015 meeting of the Finance Committee, it is currently estimated that the Arlington share of the Minuteman rebuild is approximately $2 million annually. I'm not opposed to this agreement. Support this and adjourn the meeting to a date prior to March 1st and then decide on a motion and added information. 
one other minor thing. I've not made a lot of friends in doing this, okay? I need to also let you know this is my wife's birthday, and this is how we're spending it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hainer. Do I have a second for Mr. Hainer's motion? Seconded, okay. Um, Mr. Schlickman. Paul Schlickman, Precinct 9. Um, I served as a member of the Minuteman School Committee from 1997 to 2001. So I'm bookended on, on the first and last articles as something that I've been involved with for a very long time. Uh, this is a reform urgently needed. Uh, the, the, the one thing I have to say is that the selectmen of the 16 towns really worked hard on this. And I know that uh, Mr. Dunn has been working tirelessly for more hours than he could count uh, working with other towns to come up with a resolution of this. And I think this town owes a debt of gratitude to the work that Mr. Dunn has done with the uh, remaining selectmen of the other 16 towns over the past few months. Um, these are vital reforms. And the fact is, is when I was on the committee, I'd be sitting next to the representative from Dover who had one child in the district enrolled, not his child, one enrolled child from the town of Dover, where we had about 140. We, we were a third of the district. He was one, one four hundredth of the district. Uh, and we all had equal votes. And to say that uh, the governance of Minutemen was absolutely trivial to most of the towns in this district, you could get 22% of the population in a two-thirds majority. The governance was severely broken this agreement solves that issue and gives us a foundation where we can have a re re reasonable governance structure that maybe another large town might want to, uh, to join. And the loss of some very small towns out of the district governance structure will probably streamline the governance of the district and make it more advantageous for both Arlington and other large communities who are not yet members. I urge you not to support the amendment because adjourning the meeting will also cause all the other votes that we've done to be delayed, to be ratified. The votes aren't final till after the meeting adjourns and then to uh, uh, approve this uh, change of the regional agreement. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Carmen. member of the Finance Committee, fellow town meeting members. So I was doing a calculation. Tonight marks the seventh year I have stood in this spot and talked about this topic, okay? So I have to voice a little bit of frustration when I'm told that after seven years of discussing this, without changing almost a sentence, that we now need a study committee. So quick recap for anybody who hasn't been here the whole seven years. For a long time, Minuteman was a horribly governed school, right? We sent a third of the kids. We had a 1 16th of the vote. It was way too expensive. I mean, it was horrible management. It was just, it was a mess, but we couldn't do anything. And why couldn't we do anything? Because you needed 10 out of 16 towns to pass the budget. And the old administration of Minuteman would start in the order. Those who have to pay, pay the least vote first. And then they'd come here and say, hey, guess what? Do whatever you want. We have the votes. Basically, go screw. Okay? So that went on for a while. And my, and my former finance committee colleague, Mr. Dan Dunn, used to stand up here when they would say that and say, that's fine. But eventually, they're going to want a new building. And when they want a new building, we are going to fight them to the death because they can't get past us at that point. And so, in 2010, they came before the town meeting with Article 58, Request for a Feasibility Study. And this town meeting agreed to that feasibility study with Arlington's demands. And the demands were simple. You will stabilize enrollment. You will reform the spending in that school, and you will give us a regional agreement where we're not sending a third of the kids, paying a third of the cost, but only have one sixteenth of the vote. You will actually treat Arlington with respect. And so we were lucky at that moment, right, because the bad management of Minuteman walked out the door, and the good management of Minuteman, which now is in, this, in the chair, led by Dr. Wuquillen, took came, came on. And Dr. Wuquillen stabilized enrollment he got the, the school in a better financial position. He brought down the per pupil spending. But he didn't fix the regional agreement, right? Because what happened was, just sort of rolling forward again, in 2014, we, as Dan said, we put before you a draft regional agreement. 
And we said, look, you know, and we said, we want you to pass this. I think I, I stood here at the time and told you it's not going to get through all 16 schools, but we need to move the goal line and we need to figure out who the people are that aren't going to be with us. And so we took that vote. You, you as a town meeting affirmatively voted for that. And let me just check my notes for one second. I'll tell you exactly which vote it was. It was to, 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 to Article 21 of the 2014 town meeting. So you took that vote, okay? And so we talked about it some more. And we talked about it some more. And then last year, we had a building, we had building recommendations that came before you. And if you look at last year's Minuteman vote, which was on all of your seats, there's a slide called the building project. And it goes on and on for one, two, three, four, five, six slides explaining the building. It talks about the five options we can have. It talks about how if we get this done by next year, we get 40% reimbursement. And if we don't, our reimbursement rate will lapse and we'll go to 31%. But we also said at that time that we had a problem. And our problem, again, even with the deadline of June 30, 2016, to keep MSB reimbursement at 40%, is we didn't have a new regional agreement. Because as Dan said, the 2014 agreement failed in five communities. So the whole, the whole circle, it, it all came full circle, right? Because up until 2011, when Dan came onto the Board of Selectmen, he used to stand here and give the finance committee's opposition to Minuteman. Then, that became my task for several years, but now we had to punch it over the goal line. And so Dan went back to Minuteman, and he said, okay, I'm gonna broker this deal. I have the weight of the school committee. I have the weight of the finance committee. We've gotten affirmative town meeting votes. We have everything lined up. You guys are gonna play ball with Arlington. You're gonna work on this, and we're not going with the school. And so we bust our hump. It was in the newspaper. It was on local cable access. Everybody knew this was going on, and we finally got we finally got our regional agreement that works, that has everything from 2014 with little, a few changes, okay? And so we bring it back to this town meeting, so, right? So now we're in the seventh year doing this. We have 10 or 11 articles we've put before you, and lo and behold, we need a study committee. A study committee? For, for what? If, if there was a problem with this article, if there was a problem with this article, the time to say something was anywhere between seven years ago and about a month ago. That was the time to talk about it. The time to talk about it is not tonight. It is not from now to March 1st. And so I urge you to support this action. And look, I know some people will probably get up after me and say, this is a very expensive school. It is. We don't know how to pay for it right now. That's true. But I will close with what I've said every time I have stood up here, which is we live in a 21st century global economy where education of all sorts, whether it's education at Arlington High that will prepare you for college, you know, is necessary, or if it's vocational education to create the next generation of plumbers or carpenters or electricians, that, that is all critically necessary, right? And frankly, I don't think there's a heck of a lot of difference, because if you've ever received a bill from your doctor and your electrician on the same day, I don't think you feel there's much <laughs> difference. But we have to remember the, the jobs and why this is critically important, why we have to pay for this and why we have to be, be, be you know, behind this is the jobs from 40 years ago where we could pass a child through the Arlington school system or 50 years ago and pass them through the Arlington school system and kind of give them an okay education and send them off to Waltham to a protected union job at Raytheon where they could, you know, do all things and, and make a great wage and, and support family. Those days are gone. And so we have to educate our children the best we can to provide them with the skills of the current economy so they can succeed. So again, I ask you to support this, and I ask you to defeat the substitute motion. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh -huh. Ms. LaCourt. Annie LaCourt, Precinct 15. Move the question on all matters before us. Okay, we have a motion to terminate debate on all matters before us. Um, all in favor of terminating debate will press one when we get the green light. If you don't want to terminate debate, you'll press two. And it was seconded. Okay, press one to terminate debate, two to keep talking about it. <laughs> To 
Debate is terminated, 168 in affirmative, 17 in the negative. Um, that terminates the debate on Article 8. We have now before us a recommended, excuse me, Mr. Hainer's substitute motion, which would supplant the recommended vote of the Board of Selectmen. So all in favor of Mr. Hainer's substitute motion, please vote yes by pressing 1, vote no by pressing 2. That's a, a negative vote, 161 in the negative, 23 in the affirmative. Mr. Haynes' substitute fails. We now have before us the recommended vote of the Board of Selectmen. This is an up or down vote. One yes to amend the, accept the recommended amendment to the district, and two to not accept it. So one for yes, you want to amend the district commit agreement, two you do not. <coughs> It's an affirmative vote, 178 in the affirmative, five in the negative. Arlington has voted to amend the written Minuteman School District. Mr. Tosti. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I do want to make one comment. Uh, th there's been a lot of people that worked on that last article. Uh, Charlie Foskett did yeoman's work uh, in getting this put together and getting to, to the uh, sort of 10 to 6. And Dan Dunn has worked countless hours. Dan, do you still have a job? Okay, yeah, he still has his job, but he almost lost it with that, and I'd like to thank him very much. I move to take Article 1 from the table. All in favor, Article 1 is on the tape, off the table. I move that the, this town meeting be dissolved. All in favor of dissolving the special town meeting of January 2016, please say yes. Yes. All opposed? Town meeting is dissolved. Please return your clickers. This is our only night. If you bring it home, we're in big trouble. There's bins on every single door. Please return your clickers.